guys, uh, before I get too far down this track here, I want to bring you up to speed with what um, uh, what we're about to do. Um, exhaust system on the E46 M54, something everybody tells you leave well enough alone. Um, as you know, we have done the, uh, the M50 intake manifold conversion. Um, we do have the M3 uh, branches. Uh, so by all accounts, um, this motor, given the right tuning, should be able to perform a little bit better up in the top end of the rev range than what we see in stock. So we're taking the plunge, we are going to do exhaust and we're going to try and then tune because currently we're trying to tune just for the um, for the intake manifold and the branches, but we still have the old restrictive exhaust uh, with some pretty butcher style um, work on the underside where where one of the, uh, where, um, the, the intermediate cats were removed. So um, yeah, why are we doing it ourselves? I mean, we could probably take this off to an exhaust shop um, and get it done uh, you know, anywhere from kind of three, three grand, seven grand. Um, bottom line is, as you know, our style is to do as much as we can ourselves to learn in the process because every time we learn something, it's an investment in, in the future and we can always improve on it. Um, and I would quite rather um, uh, pay to mess something up myself than pay somebody else to mess it up for me. So, um, yeah, I have a healthy distrust for, for pretty much every, anybody other than myself, which is maybe, maybe arrogant, but that's what it is. So, um, what did I do? Uh, the first thing is, uh, and I'm going to swing the camera around, let's just go and have a little peek. So first step, um, I didn't want to use the MIG welder on an exhaust. Um, I just think you can, you can focus on much finer work uh, with a TIG machine. Uh, TIG machines, um, I also wanted to make sure that we got something that we could do aluminium welding as well, which meant we did need to get an ACDC TIG machine. Uh, they're bloody expensive. I managed to pick this baby up. I think I paid four and a half grand for it. Um, the guy who sold it to me had bought it, told me he'd never used it, swore blind it worked. Um, I managed to pick up a, a full bottle of, of, of Argon. Um, I think I also negotiated the guy down from two grand to 1800 bucks. Um, got it back and it's actually been sitting in the garage now for probably about three months and uh, decided to try and get it get it up and going and it wouldn't work and I thought oh, here we go beautiful I've been had uh, turns out it was just a control cable um, so this this particular uh, machine requires a, a trigger input um, replace that cable um, and it's absolutely great haven't TIG welded for about uh, 25 years um, but uh, yeah, with a bit of practice, I've, I've probably spent maybe two hours practicing, seem to be getting to a point of, of acceptable welding. So that was the first step. I've rather invested in a machine which will allow us to do a whole bunch of things going forward than to let somebody else just do the job for us. So then underneath the car, um, as you're aware, we've got the, uh, the M3 headers in there. So they're cool. I've just actually unbolted the... Um, the beginning of the of the pipe i kind of got ahead of myself here before starting this video i should have should have got started before i started cutting um so i've just taken a piece out i've just hacked it off here this is actually the, the spot where um where this intermediate section over here was basically put in by by some uh, not terribly talented exhaust um exhaust shop uh, when they cut the cat out and i think you can see uh, can you see sorry I, I don't know if i can turn on flash at this point but if you have a look inside this pipe, where where my finger is is actually the inside diameter of the of the of the pipe that they've put in. That's how badly they've misaligned it. I mean, it's literally better part of 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 a, of a centimeter. So this gnarly piece comes out, and then uh, we carry on through. We've got the resonator box here. That's like a little mystery. Nobody knows what it does, but I suspect this is actually what BMW uses to tune the the scavenging pulse length. Um, so you'll probably find there's some kind of crossover or branch inside this box. Once we have it out, we will mutilate that and have a, have a look. And then it continues all the way through into this great big hunk of, of metal, which is the rear silencer, complete with the uh, long disabled uh, vacuum valve. And off it goes. So um, one thing I don't have is a pipe bending machine, and this is going to make life bloody difficult. So uh, the plan is as follows. I actually have a full stainless steel exhaust system, which I had put on my wife's E39 uh, back in the day by Rob Green. And um, it was tuned at the same time. To be honest, it made good power, but the exhaust was horrible. It had terrible drone, it went back twice. Um, they made a couple of changes, but just couldn't live with it. So about a month later, just took, took, took the exhaust off and it's been sitting in the garage roof for probably 10 years. 
Um, so I took it out and I'm going to cut that up. And basically the idea is effectively everywhere where I have to make any kind of transition, I'm going to look to the existing exhaust parts that I have and effectively use the bends and sections of pipe. I mean, in essence, this entire section here is absolutely fine. So this can all be reused. I mean, this is the most complex bent part of the of the of the car. So effectively, all we need to do is effectively take this this resonator box out. This section here again is, is absolutely usable. So I've effectively got to get from here transition through to here. And why is it here and not over there? And that's because the X pipe is going in. The X pipe is going in as close to the to the branches as I can get them. So the X pipe is probably going to end up something something like that. This was also scavenged from from that Rob Green exhaust system. So um, and and I've I've opted to use this because the one I ordered from uh, from Amazon um, they shipped the bloody wrong size. And you know whilst they say you can ship it back. Um, it's not really going to help because it cost me more to ship it back. They've sent, they've sent me a uh, so-called Turner half inch, which I think is about 63 mil or something like that. And uh, yeah, the pipe, the pipe diameter on the, on the E46 is actually uh, 50 mil. Funnily enough, you know, here's, a, here's a useful fact uh, that I don't think many people are aware of. The pipe is on, on the left side here is 50 mil nominal. It's kind of 49 point something, where, where South African stainless pipe is actually 50 point something, 50.2, I think. So it's just under the standard stainless steel, 50, 50 mil nominal, but that goes all the way through, um, right through to the back on this side. On the other side, however, on this branch, the section that runs from here through to the cats, the first, the first cat, is actually a 40, I think it's a 44 or 45 mil. So it's literally, you know, a couple of mil, three mil smaller diameter. And I thought I was measuring, I was measuring funny, but it's not, it's, 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 it's absolutely two or three mil different diameter. And clearly that's been done intentionally. And you know, every time I see that, um, it just makes me appreciate how much thought goes into the detail of these cars, because obviously to deviate by literally a couple of millimeters um, there was obviously a clear reason for that. Otherwise, you know, why bother? Um, so yeah, <laughs> we'll see. We're, un we're undoing all of that fine engineering, but at the end of the day, we don't need refinement, drivability, fuel consumption, um, and, and noise uh, levels to be kept tame. We just want this bloody thing to go like smoke. So yeah, we're gonna try and get every, every one, two, three kilowatts that we can get out of this motor between 4,000 and 6,800, we'll be very happy to take. So. The risk here is that my welding lets me down and I turn this into a total dog's ass, um, in which case I'll be putting my tail between my legs and we'll end up having to get somebody to do it for me. But yeah, keep fingers crossed and hoping that I'll be able to show you, um, you know, a half decent homemade exhaust job patched together by bits of, of uh, reclaimed um, exhaust systems. They're certainly gonna be a first, I think. The one last thing incidentally before I go is in the initial transition section from here before I get into the X pipe, um, I will be welding in the bung for the new Innovate uh, wideband um, oxygen sensor, which Nick had ordered. That arrived today. I've got that bung, so yeah, that's going to be first step. All right, stay tuned. Should be fun. Cheers, guys. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, it's about quarter past two on uh, Sunday morning, and I have finally got this bloody exhaust system finished. Um, geez, it's been a marathon. I've been working at it most nights this week. Um, get home from work, uh, have something to eat and get cutting and welding through to about midnight. But uh, we've, we've got to get the tuning done tomorrow. So um, I've had to get this finished now. So I've been at it now for about 18 hours solid today. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm happy with the results. So it's about to go on the car, but before it does, let's just have a little look. So there we have it, as I said, um, no bending machine. So effectively I bought one meter of uh, of 50 mil um, stainless steel exhaust tube. And other than that, I have recycled various, various parts of the um, E46 and E39 exhaust systems. This is what's left of those two exhausts. This wouldn't have been possible without um, this cutoff saw with a tungsten carbide blade. It's, uh, it, it gives 
decent straight cuts and pretty much a game changer. But yeah, I'm, I'm as I say, relatively happy with the result. The exhaust is very straightforward. We start with the flanges, we go straight into an X-pipe. The bung is um, on the one stub there, just between the flange and the X-pipe. And then it just goes on straight through all the way to the back. Uh, these two little silencers were intermediate silencers. There were four of them on the E39 and then a big back box. So I don't think these are gonna do too much silencing, but um, uh, hopefully just take the edge off things. Uh, yeah, total I think of 23 different little pieces of pipe that I had to select and cut and fettle to get it all together. And then uh, with my novice TIG skills, weld it all up. Um, obviously TIG is very forgiving, but um, if your fit up is bad, it's an absolute nightmare. Um, and getting the, uh, the pipes to kind of stay aligned when you're trying to tack them up. Sometimes you need three hands. Um, magnets play havoc uh, with, your, uh, with your gas cone on the, uh, on the tick torch. So it's been, I've used up all of my swear words for March and April already. Um, but yeah, happy with the results. I'm gonna get it on the car now and uh, we'll see what, it, what it's like. All right guys, I've uh, got the exhaust back in. There we go. Going through, tucked away quite nicely, using the original uh, hangers. So yeah, I think it's um, fits quite fine. It looks a little odd with the with the spacing of the two tailpipes. Obviously a lot wider than if you've just got a dual outlet on a on a two in two out um, silencer. But um, this is basically the way it pops out using these, these two little uh, individual silencers. So yeah, hope, hope it works and um, hope the tuning goes well because uh, this will definitely lose power for us if, uh, with, the, with the stock tune. So uh, we're definitely going to need to get some uh, some changes done in the ECU to make sure that this actually works for us and not against us. All right, we'll let you know how it goes tomorrow.